All right, thanks for dropping by and checking out the channel. Um, I'm Alex, I work at Flux Defense in customer service and, and marketing and website stuff on the back end. Um, just a lot of different hats and I've been with Flux since 2019. So I've grown a lot with the company and I've, I've, grown, to, uh, I've grown to build out my kit in a specific way, especially after all the testing that we've done and all the accessories we've tried. And I think I've got mine, my personal Raider, pinned down to what I want it to be and to lean into the strong suit of what the Raider is. So I'm gonna go over my Raider setup. It's been a while, I did one of these a year and a half ago maybe, and things have changed. So first and foremost, I am running the Raider X. That is our new iteration of the Raider that brings some quality of life upgrades over the MP17 Raider that we've had since 2020. So not anything radical, but it is a better product in the end, in our opinion or else we wouldn't have made it. <laughs> but some of the updates include a additional Picatinny slot on the top where the optic is, as well as it's a little bit raised, so it accepts more optic mounts. Um, we have another Picatinny rail here in the light accessory section, or a Picatinny slot, so it accepts more lights that are on the market. It has some more ergonomic cutouts here, so you can hit your safety a lot easier. Um, in a firing grip, uh, better texture here, a lot more surface area, and some better fencing here on the bottom where the dual mag release button is. Now, I went with the Raider X because of those reasons, um, also because it had been a couple years since I've been running the MP17 Raider, and to have a new, updated, fresh Raider was something that I was really looking forward to after a while. But let's break down um, how I like this uh, stock lengthwise, how do I like optic, slide, uh, compensator, and light. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make this thing safe. I have it loaded with some Federal HST as my defensive, and I'm gonna pull that out. So, we're good to go. Um, I'm gonna go over the stock length first. So I went with the, there we go. I went with the flush stock on the Raider X, and the reason I do that is because this, in a, the essence of the Raider is that it's a compact system that you can tuck away in your bag, in a truck console, and, or in a jacket with a single point sling underneath. So um, being compact and concealable was something that I wanted to keep, and the flush stock does that for me. I picked the stock and I SBR'd my P320 FCU because um, I wanted the surface area here on the back that the brace does not, it just doesn't have. It is designed and intended to be used as an arm brace. Therefore, it's not great for actually using shouldering. So the flush stock is what I went with. It is longer. There's more texture here and you don't lose the little QD cup or anything. So I went with that. I can always scale it up. Like I said, it's an SPR, so I can go all the way from the 1.5 to the three inch stock. Um, so let's go over optic. I went with the FDE RMR to go with this because um, all in all, I think it looks really sexy. <laughs> and I've been running an RMR on my stuff for many years, especially um, on the Raider because I, I know it works. Um, up to this point though, I have used Hollow Suns, I've used uh, Aimpoint Acro P2, that's on my other Raider, and I've used a Steiner MPS. Those are all great optics and they all work and they're reliable, um, but I just, I had an FDE RMR laying around and if I had an FDE Acro P2, I'd probably throw that on there. Um, all right, let's go down the line. I've got a Streamlight TLR7X. Uh, this is something that's newer. They just launched the X. It's like a dual fuel version of the uh, TLR7, but it's awesome little light. It's the same output. It will take a CR123A um, or it will take a rechargeable 18350. I'm gonna have to make sure. I'm not sure if it's exactly an 18350, but they do mention on their website. So it's rechargeable, uh, something I really like. Um, something I also really like about the TLR7A or sub or X is that I don't get these switches turning on by themselves in my backpack. That is an issue I've had in the past with other lights, and so I've ditched a lot of the other lights I use, like the TLR1, 
uh, PL350. Um, those lights I could not use because they would turn themselves on in the bag, drain my battery, and that wouldn't work. So I've stuck with the TLR7 series and the Surefire X300 series for my lights. And I haven't had an issue. This is over years of experience. So um, I run the Harrington Arms two port comp, as you can see here. Um, the reason I like this comp is because the two port comp actually does mitigate recoil quite well. And I've been using it for, let's say up to two to two plus years now. And um, it does exactly what it's supposed to. It's reliable. I do use a lighter spring and I need to mention that because people don't uh, maybe realize when you're new to compensators or suppressors that a lighter spring will help the action because some of that energy is being robbed and you're also adding a lot of leverage to the barrel when you're firing it as the gases are coming out the top, making the tip of the barrel heavier uh, for, from a physics standpoint. And if it's heavier, it's harder for that tilt action to um, cycle the slide and load the next round. So a lighter spring, I went with the Armory Craft um, adjustable P320 spring uh, spring kit and I love it. It works, it works with my suppressors as well. So there's that. Um, I've got a Silencer Co. barrel, threaded barrel for this. Uh, we went with them because again, they're a local company to us in Utah. We've tested the Silencer Co. P320 barrels for years. They work, we carry them on our website as well as the Harrington Arms Comp. So I trust them and I've done a lot of the testing in order to trust them. So there's that, the, the Gun Co. slide. I love this slide, it's awesome. It's FDE as well, so it matches. And they, you know, they, they make a really good slide. Um, in general, if you're looking for reliability, I would go towards OEM P320 slides all day, but I have not seen a difference between this the Gun Co. Um, slide and an OEM slide, as it's always worked. Tolerances have been good, so I leave it like that. We've had this slide for a couple years in marketing for Flux, and it's been on one of my personal guns almost throughout the whole time. So, apart from those things, um, there's one final thing I'll talk about with this, or with my personal Flux Raider X, is I do have the safety, and I'm gonna, Here's the safety because for a bag gun, I do believe that a safety is something that's important. Important to me, um, to you, who knows, you can do whatever you want, but I wanted to keep the safety since it does work with this OEM SIG trigger. Um, we have safety delete kits and it depends if that's something you want. If anything, I would delete one side just so that when I go to swipe it off, it's not in the way to my, on my support hand or on my firing hand over here. So that I do think is a, a good reason to do a delete. Um, but other than that, you know, I use 21 round mags. Um, like I said, Federal HST right now. And this thing is my daily concealed in a bag driver and I love it so much. Uh, I believe it is the best micro PDW out there. I know there's some other ones out there. Um, I don't think they offer as much in one package um, as what we offer. I'm mega biased, obviously, so take my words with a grain of salt, but this has been our life for the past couple of years. Uh, so try it out for yourself. I don't, but if you do have a Flux Raider, some of the reasons I set mine up uh, the way that I have, and maybe you could take that into account if it fits the role. I have it zeroed for 20 yards. The reason I have it zeroed for 20 yards is because it, it is bullseye every time, so the accuracy for me is awesome. Um, but because that's kind of the farthest that I have in my current living area where I would shoot and engage a target, so 20 yards is where I set my, um, set my zero. I do know my holdover, it's pretty small, honestly, compared to ARs or other uh, nine mil PCCs that are traditional AR style. Those have a lot more hide over bore than you would think. There's not a lot of hide over bore here when you take that into consideration. I would say uh, an inch and a half with this setup, maybe two inches tops. Uh, so again, that's this. Thanks for dropping by. 
I have several other videos specifically about the Raider and about certain accessories that uh, we've tested out. And so you can go check out one of those videos. I'm gonna be in my new studio here. Um, and by studio, I mean dark garage where this all can work and look cool. So um, be expecting more videos from me here, especially because the P365 Raider is coming out in a, the goal is in a month and it's looking good. It's so cool. And I'm gonna have my P365 Raider in the probably next video, if not uh, two videos from now. I already have my P365 ready to go. I've got an optic for it, I've got light for it. Um, just waiting for the parts to come in to start doing marketing. We've been shooting this thing for a long time, our own prototype ones. The P365 Raider is so cool. It is smaller than the Raider, but somehow has, uh, is somehow more ergonomic in several different ways. It's thinner, you can carry it in a holster in a waistband, you can carry it under armpit, super small. Um, there's a lot of benefits to it. We'll go over that in the next video. But either way, see you later. Bye. <laughs> ba 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 ba.